That looked tough. And also, why are we turning logs around? Those of you who've worked at a sawmill are kind of scratching your head right now, but this is not normal sawmilling. We're doing piano soundboards, and that requires a lot of weird turning and moving of the log. I'm not going to get into that because I've already made that video. This is more for our new hires and just showing them the ropes around here. So stick around to see how we're doing things this year. I'm just going to give an update video on some of the changes we've made to our workflow for cutting instrument wood, piano wood specifically. So you can see Mike cutting there. We obviously got a new motor on now. That happened mid-season, so we had to do a motor swap kind of halfway through our piano wooding season. But that's made a big improvement to our cut speeds here, which is nice. So wood comes off the mill, bumps over to a little bit of a table, and then gets run through the edger, which is the same as last year, exactly the same. Sawdust falls underneath into a bucket. We pack that stuff up onto the uh, chip pile, chip mountain over there. And then all the edgings, the waste wood coming off the edger gets piled up at the chipper behind me. Then the good wood, so the wood that's coming through the edger goes under this little rack system. So I whip this up in a hurry and it's kind of experimental for me, but it seems to work. The goal is just to get myself further away from the edger. So what I can do, is take wood that's coming through the edger and make a decision on whether it's clear, no knots, no defects, and in which case it continues straight through over to our three sorts. We've got three different piles. We've got like a long pile, a medium pile, and a short pile. If it has defects, I simply will take the board and flick it over onto this rack over here. That gives me a little bit of time, a little bit of a delay on everything. So that means I can kind of slow down at the chop saw. So over here, we've got our chop saw set up underneath our grading tent. So we've got 16 foot long table here and the wood can be lifted up <coughs> from the rack and flicked onto the chop saw. And from here, you could slide it on back and forth pretty easily on these pieces of PVC. Then I can lay it down, do some grading, cut out the knots, cut out any color and any other defects. If it has too many defects, it goes straight over here to our Coal pile. There's nothing in here that's instrument grade. It's all under instrument. And then if it's short, too short as in under five feet, then we can put it over here in our short lift, which is full. This one's pretty tall already. So we'll have to pull this out soon. So we do four feet and under in there. Well, about four feet. And this stuff is five feet and longer no knots in there basically all clear and we can set aside the one inch over here we let that build up and then once we have enough we'll load a load of one inch on to there and we could do maybe one or two layers of one inch per lift and then while i'm running the chop saw i'll do things like process stickers so we run all of our edgings through and make stickers or any wood that's really kind of funny shaped not good enough. Uh, we'll turn it into stickers. All the little cutoff pieces from the chop saw where I'm cutting out knots and defects like this. It's loaded up onto a rack. We usually have to build these racks. At the bottom there's a pallet. Yeah, it takes me 20 minutes maybe to whip up a rack like this. And this stuff is, we're calling it firewood, but we'll see. We'll go through it again and see if there's anything better than firewood, as you can see here. Yeah, this stuff's really nice. Spruce, vertical grain, no knots. And we run it through the drying process ourselves as well. So stickers every two feet. And then we'll bring it over to our drying area. There, we have a good air drying spot. Let it sit there for a few months. And then hopefully we'll take it back over here and we'll load it into our dry kiln. And we'll finish it off, get it down below 10%. So because we're using a 52 foot high bed 
truck. We've kind of based our lumber lengths on that. Long lift is 20 foot six. Our medium lift is a 16 footer. And then our short one, which we packed away just now is a 12 footer. And using those lengths, we can generally make a few different combinations that will fill up the truck nicely. That handles basically all the, all the spruce. We don't waste any of our spruce. It all gets used either as stickers. We try and set aside a bunch of wood for stickers or as uh, wood chips. So behind me, we've got the wood chipper set up. So we load it up like this, it's all prepped. And then we fire up the chipper and run it all through at once. So it takes all that, gobbles it up in a couple of minutes. And that way we don't have to feed it really. It just auto feeds in and uh, makes us a lot of wood chips which we will then use to kiln dry and more probably. We do make a lot of wood chips, so to find a use for them. I have a couple of compost piles going, making some good compost for all the gardeners out there. That's what we've changed this year. It's helped tidy up the yard a lot compared to, you know, the original video. If you go watch that, you can see we've got sticks everywhere. We're basically tripping on them when you're on the down chain. And this year, I decided to get rid of all that, keep things elevated. The goal is that they don't touch the ground at any point. I don't think they should in the manufacturing process. Once they're on the mill, they shouldn't touch ground ever again. So that's my goal. Let me know what you think, if you like it. If you don't like it, appreciate that information as well. Small scale manufacturing, but uh, we do produce a lot of wood using, you know, relatively simple equipment. Kind of a rush schedule when we do our manufacturing because usually December we start looking for logs and then we end up buying logs in January, February, and moving them over here kind of into February. One of our deadlines with this stuff is that it has to be winter cut that produces a better quality wood for the soundboards that are being made. And the other thing is that it has to be finished cutting. So it has to be like debarked and in lumber form by the time that beetles start to actively fly in the spring. So there's a few beetles here, one of them being a spruce beetle. This is spruce wood. They like to lay their larvae in there. So preventing wood damage means that we have to finish that by, you know, basically April sometime. We actually have a lot of different machines running in unison to make this happen. Just increases your risk of a breakdown. Just having so many different motors and so many different machines. That's a lot of bearings, a lot of moving parts. So eventually something's got to give. It's just part of milling. So we'll just get our parts all lined up and be ready to fix stuff when it does go. That'll be the solution there. A couple other things I did not explain. So dunnage, which is just four foot long knotty stuff, goes underneath here and that gets used right away. And then our stickers are four feet long as well. Those come off the chop saw, usually in bundles. I'll do bundles and I'll chop them all at four feet. They end up there and then they go spread out onto our lifts right away. Four foot long dunnage, which is two inches thick, gets doubled up, so four inches thick then for dunnage. Or we also use it as stickers over here so this is our pile of heartwood so on each log we cut out the heart that stuff does not make instrument wood or really anything so we just cut it out and we make timbers out of it instead so we make six by sixes usually or if they're kind of extra naughty then they might make six by eights or four by sixes if they're pretty good something like that so the timbers get stickers that are two inches thick <laughs> it's a good setup there's always room for improvement though if you have any thoughts on improving the workflow just let me know in the comments it's one of those things everybody has an idea but until you try it <laughs> it's hard to know for sure what's going to work and what isn't going to work so yeah this is just trial and error over many years it's moving in the right direction this has been the piano wood update how we're cutting this season so yeah feel free to uh Check out the original if you haven't seen that one. I put a link to that video on the top right of the screen here. You can click on the card and go watch that video. We're gonna finish this uh, one off with just stacking the lumber into nice lifts for air drying. As always, thanks for watching and uh, we will see you in the next video.